Hey guys, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro Destin Demarion here, here to talk about a spring bed fishing tip that's going to help you catch some more fish this, this season. Um, I've got my seven foot IAP MFS. This is a seven foot medium heavy or medium action fa or medium fast action cash and rod. This is from the Icon series. Very lightweight, which is extremely important when you're finesse fishing. It's got the raw finish, um, so it keeps the weight down on it. It's a very lightweight, sensitive rod. You got to be able to pick up on those very slight very sensitive bites when you're bed fishing, especially when it's gotten pressure in the springtime. Like we're at uh, Weiss Lake right now, it, the pressure has been absurdly uh, absurd this week and these fish are definitely a little finicky. So, so doing something like that, being able to feel those bites a little bit more like we were at fork last week is really important. So what I like to do, uh, everybody likes to bed fish, flip with a casting rod, flip with as heavy line as you can, one hook, just wrench them in. And believe me, if I can do that, that is what I want to do. But when fishing gets more tough, the fish get a little more finicky, this is what I go to. And this helps me get bites when the fishing is tough, when the bed fishing season, even around the bed fishing, they will bite this rig. So the setup I like to use, I'm gonna use a spinning reel on this, my seven foot medium fast action cash and icon suit from the icon series, all purpose series. Um, I'm going to have a 10 pound braided mainline gamma torque braid. And I'm going to throw on gamma either 8 to 10 pound. Honestly, most of the time I will go with 8 because gamma edge is so strong and abrasion resistant. I'm not worried about, you know, fish breaking me off as much. Unless I'm fishing heavy cover, then I'll upsize to maybe a 10 or 12. And usually when I'm fishing heavy cover, I don't want to do this, but there's times when it's probably the best thing to get you a bite. And really the bait, the setup is probably the most important thing. I mean, we all know about a wacky worm. Not all of us necessarily like to throw it, but it's something that's made me a lot of money over my career. And it's just something I'm very, very comfortable doing, whether it's small mouth fishing or if it's large mouth fishing, I'm gonna set up with a wacky rig. This is an owner. Uh, this is a jungle wacky hook. This is a Zo wire hook extremely strong uh, material on the metal doesn't flex quite as much as a lot of the other wacky hooks which is important that flex is what enables those fish to kind of wrench on it and get off a lot of times so that zo wire is really important this is a i believe this is a one eye um, it's got a weed guard here too which is good a lot of times when you're fishing for bedding fish they're very shallow so they can be around weeds and other cover that you know might get you snagged and this will help you not get quite as much uh, of that you know, the weeds on it might help you not get it stuck on some wood or something around the beds. Um, and then I'm going to rig up a, a stick worm, a Senko. This one is just a five inch variety. It's a color I really like. Something to imitate a brim most of the time. So your green pumpkins, your watermelon variation, and that's what this is too. This is actually the one I was throwing it for. Um, I like to put an O-ring a lot of times just to help cut down on losing a lot of base because as you know, Yamamoto Senko stuff, they're very expensive, but it does the job well. And uh, that's the setup I like to do. Um, what I'm gonna do this time of year, I mean, I'm really just gonna throw this around likely bedding areas if I can't see them, or I'm gonna specifically target beds. I'm gonna cast it a little bit past it. The good thing about this is it's very lightweight. You can skip it across, so it's not making much noise. The shadow's not too, too big of a profile like when you're flipping a big creature bait or something. And sometimes that'll scare the fish away. So if you skip it past and you just kind of inch it back in and let it sit there, a lot of times they bite it before it even hits the bottom of the bed and they'll just start swimming away with it. And like I said, the most important thing is being able to feel that bite. And when you can't physically see that fish eat the bait, it's really, really important to be able to watch your line, see just a little bit of, feel that little bit of a tick when that fish sucks that bait in. And that's why I do use a spinning rod in these applications. I mean, casting rods are extremely sensitive, really good for this too, but when those fish are being more finicky, this is what I like to go to. And when I, when the fish start swimming out of the bed with it, which they usually do, it's more of a defensive bite. 
So you see, even if you don't hook the fish, a lot of times we'll grab the back or something like that. Don't be afraid to wait and pitch back in there because that fish will come back and get it a lot of times. If it's just picking it up, sometimes you might have to change colors. Sometimes you might have to put some kind of a trailer hook on there if they're short striking it. But those are the kind of things that's gonna help you catch those fish. And just understanding what the fish are doing this time of year, being able to target them efficiently with this wacky rig setup, with this finesse setup on this seven foot medium icon series from the all purpose line, it's gonna help you put more fish in the boat this spring.